So we currently have the most popular websites that everyone's heard about when it comes to learning how to code. And we are gonna go through them one by one and rank them to see what the best option to learn how to code is for 2023 if you are someone that wants to learn how to code in 2023. First up, we have Code Academy. Code Academy is a great resource. A lot of people use it, a lot of people talk about it, and a lot of people don't like it anymore because it costs quite a bit to use. I believe if you are an individual, it's like $17 a month uh, for the regular um, non-pro. I, I don't know what the difference is between the two, but the point is it's probably one of the more expensive resources out there. However, it is really great because it is interactive and you can actually just sort of, you don't have to download anything. You can just code on the spot, run the code. Um, they give you prompts, they tell you what to do, they guide you through it. So it's a great resource all in all, but it is not the best when it comes to actually just learning how to code on budget, especially if you're brand new to coding. Um, it has some very beginner courses, but there are probably some better resources out there for free that you can try out before actually moving on with this. But that being said, I still think it's probably around A tier when it comes to learning how to code. If you can afford it, that's even better. The next thing we have is freecodecamp.org. And by the way, links to everything will be in the description. Freecodecamp.org is probably one of the best things to ever exist when it comes to programming. They have so much free resources out there. And it's not even just about like their website where they have a couple of free courses and stuff. And a lot of these, like for example, responsive web design certification, they don't sound like they're for people that are brand new at coding. But if you actually go through it, you'll see that they start you off with the basics of learning HTML and CSS. Assess, and it just walks you through almost everything you could possibly need if you were to learn for one to two hours a day when trying to learn how to code. And not just that, but they have been almost everywhere. They have almost 9,000 tutorial blogs on their website. I've written a couple for them actually way, way back. They also have a YouTube channel where you can find like insane um, videos where they have, for example, some guy just sit there for seven and a half hours and teach you the basics of JavaScript. So all in all, free Cold Camp is definitely uh, probably S tier when it comes to programming. Um, just almost anything you can think of if you want to learn it from the ground up. If it's not too complex, they probably have a tutorial on it or a seven hour YouTube video or an entire course on it. And it's all completely free like the name suggests. I would highly recommend that being one of the first stops uh, that you should check out if you are trying to learn how to code. Specifically, probably just pick a language and go to YouTube and type in like, you know, uh, how to learn JavaScript, for example, or like, you know, JavaScript tutorial, and then just look for free code camp. They probably have a seven hour video of it for almost every language out there. Next is HackerRank. Uh, so HackerRank is one of those websites that is sort of like Leak Code, if you've heard of that, in the sense that it's more geared towards helping you practice for uh, programming interviews instead of just helping you learn how to code from scratch. There are some really nice concepts that you can actually uh, learn from, uh, learn using HackerRank from scratch, such as like basic data structures and basic algorithms, but it's definitely not something to start yourself off on. It's like that intermediate step from where you just figure out how to uh, code and you understand the language and the syntaxes, and you're trying to get a more in-depth understanding of de data structures and algorithms so you can, you know, do things like interview prep. This would probably be like the middle tool for that, um, you know, aside from LeetCode, which we'll talk about afterwards. So uh, I would probably put this as a B tier pretty good resource but very um, very very specific to what you are doing next up we have YouTube I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in S tier because literally every single one of these places that you are seeing now probably has some YouTube presence where they have paid or have had experts come on uh, you know for some sort of partnership where they will go and just give a whole bunch of information for free you're watching this video through YouTube so chances are you know that YouTube is a true treasure trove when it comes to anything and honestly when I started learning very specific aspects of coding like front-end development and stuff like that it was all through YouTube just pick your top five YouTubers watch all of their tutorials and, and follow along with them if you can um, and you're not gonna have a problem honestly you could probably learn everything just through YouTube uh, and not use anything else on this list if you're really resourceful and you know what you're doing. So I would highly recommend uh, just, just getting really good at finding stuff on YouTube because it'll save you a lot of money and probably a lot of time too. Uh, next up, we have Udemy. So Udemy, where did I put it, is one of these sites where 
anyone can upload a course. And the problem with that is there's not a lot of vetting. And in my experience, a lot of Udemy courses are really hit or miss. You might find one, for example, like React, like, like this one in React. And I've never taken this one. I don't know if it's great or not. It has a almost 700,000 students. So chances are it's probably pretty good. But the problem is, number one, they all cost and they're always all on sale. Like I've never seen one that was not 90% off uh, in price. I don't know if you can see that. Like um, number one, it's sort of like gimmicky with their pricing, which I don't really like. And number two, there are just so many courses on there that it's really hard to find the good one. And if you choose a bad one, you could just straight up spend hours of time learning from someone who actually doesn't really know what they're talking about. And it just instills a bunch of bad habits from you. In general, I think if you're trying to learn something very specific and the only place you can find it is on Udemy, maybe consider buying that $15 course on Udemy. Uh, but other than that, I'd probably just stay away. I'd put, I'd put Udemy at either C tier or D tier, probably C tier. Uh, the next up is Pluralsight. Now, if you're not familiar with Pluralsight, it is pretty much the like super specific version of uh, Udemy in the sense that it's almost always for software uh, stuff. I think they've expanded to multiple different sectors. But the point is, when you go to Pluralsight, it's because you're trying to learn a very specific skill when it comes to coding. Not specifically coding in general. Um, and I don't think it'll give you a very... Um, accurate understanding whatever you it is whatever it is you're trying to learn because a lot of the times the courses are pretty short uh and not to mention it is insanely expensive honestly i don't see why you wouldn't be able to get something that's even better um you, you know on your own through youtube uh they also vet all of their instructors which is great but the downside of that is they vet it to the point where the actual content can get outdated pretty quickly because not many people are remaking the content that they have on the site originally so if you're learning react for example or some javascript front end library chances are what you're learning from is going to be a bit outdated because there's not a bunch of people coming there and making a new site or, or making new videos about it every single day and not to mention super expensive i think it's like honestly like 200 dollars a month last time i checked or something um the site's not even there okay well it's 29 dollars a month sorry uh, or $200 a year, right? I used to have a yearly subscription and I would pretty much just use it for things like if there was a really esoteric, like niche technology that uh, I couldn't find any YouTube videos on because it was like not really used that much, you could probably find it on Pluralsight. Somebody's probably talked about it. So I would go ahead and put Pluralsight also as C tier, probably behind Udemy because in all honesty, if you're beginning to learn how to code, uh, actually, if you're beginning to learn how to code, I would put Pluralsight as D. It's the most expensive, probably the worst information out there. Um, yeah. The next up is Coursera. Coursera is similar uh, to Udemy and Pluralsight in the sense that it's just a website that has a bunch of courses on it. However, um, the courses are sort of vetted and also less expensive than Pluralsight. So it's sort of like an in-between between Udemy and uh, Pluralsight. I haven't been on it for quite some time, but they do have some amazing uh, people on there and uh, amazing certificates you can get as well. Some of, A lot of the times the people they get to teach are people in the actual industry, which I like a lot. And I do think if you're, if, if you really want to buy a course and, and, you know, it's like one of those things you need to buy, um, you know, in order to learn, it's like your learning style or whatever, and you don't, you know, you don't want to use YouTube videos, then I would recommend probably starting with Coursera over Udemy. But uh, the next thing we're going to get to is Harvard CS50, which is by far, if you are going to do a course and you want to learn computer science from the ground up, you want to learn how programming works the same way that a university degree would give you that information, this is the place to start. Uh, Harvard has a free course on EDX uh, called Introduction to Computer Science, CS50. And my goodness, it is one of the best courses I've seen on there. It's literally taken from a Harvard classroom of some guy teaching a bunch of undergrad students uh, the basics of computer science, and they just have all the courses, all, all the videos on there. And I believe they even have free follow-ups as well. Oh yeah, it's free. Uh, that's a huge plus. Um, so th there's a quite a few number of ways to learn how to code. A lot of the times, uh, most people in today's day and age, if they are not going for the degree route, they're probably going to learn like web development through a boot camp or through online courses. If you wanted to get the same level of knowledge about computer science itself, um, and that means you're sort of skipping practical knowledge for a little bit until you understand the bare fundamentals, then CS50 is definitely the way to go. I am putting CS50 up there in S tier as well because you can't find the resources that CS50 will give you in terms of actual uh, uh, knowledge of computer science in YouTube or Free Code Camp, in my opinion. It's literally a Harvard lecture made free, um, a, a series of Harvard, a whole 
Harvard course uh, made free. I don't know how much better you can get than that. And finally, we have LeetCode. LeetCode, if you've you know been interested in programming or you know getting a job at a big company, you've definitely heard of LeetCode. It is the site that everybody uses to practice for interviews. There is pretty much no uh, replacement for it. Now, caveat is it's only really useful for full-time jobs. So if you're trying to get a company at like a job at a company in, in Silicon Valley, um, it's really good for those type of things uh, for, to practice for those interviews. But in terms of learning how to code, like I said, with HackerRank, it, it's not going to help you. It's pretty much you have to know how to code. You have to know the basics of data structures and algorithms um, and the fundamentals you know, of programming, maybe even like some CS50 from Harvard uh, to understand and be able to do these questions. It is not going to help you as a beginner. It is pu almost purely interview prep um, and practicing uh, computer science theory. So I would recommend, um, if I had to, that you do this only when it is time to start interviewing for a job. Once you're comfortable with the language, you've created a couple projects and you're ready to actually start applying. This is when you should start doing hacker rank and lead code. I'm still going to put it like at a high A tier uh, because it is the best at what it does. Um, nothing is sort of like better than lead code when it comes to interview prep. There's a lot of things that try to. I only put hacker rank on this list because it's a good intermediate step towards leak code so if you're not at the leak code level yet you can use hacker rank to practice but that is why i believe it is low s tier uh high a tier because no one does it better and that's pretty much it for the tier list um if i were you and i had to go about actually learning i would say this start with you know if you want to learn about computer science uh and the actual theory behind programming do CS50. If not, which is totally fine, a lot of people don't, and by far, by, by no means do you need to do, you know, CS50 in order to get like a, a good job or anything like that. Um, if not, you can start off with just watching some very basic JavaScript tutorials. If you want to learn JavaScript or Python or whatever language you're interested in on YouTube, try to follow along, try to understand what they're doing. If that is a bit too freeform for you, then maybe check out some of the courses on Free Code Camp where they will guide you and mentor you. And if you have the money, I'd recommend also checking out Code Academy if you're starting from scratch because they have, like I mentioned, a really good program uh, for beginners as well. That's all interactive. You don't have to download anything. You can do it on your phone, uh, do it on your iPad. You don't have to have an actual computer either so that is pretty much it if you found value make sure you subscribe and i'll be putting out some more programming content like this and i'll see you in the next video